All right, we are going to go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for our Armenian Heritage, uh, Armenian American Heritage Month. We are excited to have our wonderful guests here joining us. My name is Talim Partikin. I am the teacher specialist for the teaching and learning team. And here with us today, we have our um, we have doctors and entrepreneurs in our community who have made a difference, and they have participated in a um, in a mission through Adventist Health, Glendale's Mission Armenia. They have visited several different uh, hospitals, military hospitals in Armenia during the recent Artsakh war in 2020. This group of doctors and entrepreneurs have delivered, installed and recalibrated medical equipment and trained physicians. This team along with other volunteers have made an effort over the years to improve the quality of medical procedures and outcomes to those in need. We are excited to have these guests share their stories with us for our GUSD students. And now I would like to introduce to you Arthur Zanian. He's the CEO of NBio. Greg Aramanukian, who is pre uh, President Hike Investments. Dr. Armin Gregorian, who's a general and colorectal surgeon, and Dr. Arin Abulian, who is a pulmonologist um, from Adventist and several other uh, hospitals in our community. So welcome to all of our guests. And now I will turn it to, um, to Arthur Zanian. Good morning, everyone. My name is Arthur Zanian, and I am the founder and CEO of MBioCorp. And Bio is a biomedical services firm with over 140 employees nationwide. And I was born in Hollywood, California. Mission Armenia was formed by a group of Armenian physicians and the administration team of Adventist Health in 2015. The medical mission was formed in partnership with Armenia Fund. The medical mission's purpose is to help support Armenia's medical system in rural areas, as well as its public health efforts. Adventist Health reached out to me on or around the end of 2017, realizing a biomedical engineer on the mission is imperative and critical to help sustain their mission in Artsakh and Noyan Beryan. Since 2018, I have been to Armenia more than six times in four years to help a hospital in Artsakh that is located in Stepanakert and a few hospitals in Yerevan. I was in Artsakh and Yerevan pre, post, and during the war. From the moment I stepped foot in Armenia, I felt a rush of emotions overcome me. A whirlwind of sentiments filled my heart, yet this sense of belonging came with it and it would stay with me not just for the next week and a half during the mission, but it still continues to this day. Although I had previously been to Armenia with my wife and three kids, I was beyond thrilled to revisit. However, this time I had a greater calling to serve and give back in my own capacity. The first trip I took during the war I had to design a portable x-ray that needed to be used in the battlefield and beyond. The portable x-ray will be used to locate and carefully remove shrapnel and also identify broken bones. The criteria was it had to fit in a car, van, ambulance, ultra light and portable, battery operated, and of course be able to see, the, see and read the images uh, in real time on a screen. Processing film in a battlefield setting is not manageable. I was able to source an x-ray machine and source a DR, uh, DR is uh, short for uh, digital radiology, their acronym, which includes a laptop battery operated DR panel to convert the analog, so x-rays analog, into a digital format so that the mil military doctors can make a prognosis. Uh, the most challenging part was um, training the professionals. Uh, the second trip during the war, we hand delivered over 60 wound vacs and dressing kits and of course, train the doctors on how to use the pumps. We had to make sure it was also battery operated. Armenia didn't have enough wound vacs to treat the wounded soldiers. Wound vacs are, uh, wound vacs are a type of therapy to help heal traumatic injuries and post-operative post wounds. During the treatment, the, the device decreases air pressure on the wound. This can help the wound heal more quickly. The gases in the air around us put pressure on the surface of our bodies. Prior to our visit, we had shipped out two C-arms, portable x-rays, 
endoscopy carts, masks, surgical tools, instruments, physical therapy equipment, and many more. I will share, I will, I'm gonna share some images with you guys, if that's okay. Uh, give me a second here. Can you see? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is this is Vartenis Hospital. Uh, this is Vartenis Medical Center. This is a military hospital, and it's uh, it was built in the Soviet era, I think 1974 or 75, and it was the it was an in between hospital, uh, Yerevan and Artsakh. So I'd say it's midpoint. And they would stabilize the patients here and then send them off to Yerevan for treatment. Um, so this is a GI cart right here. And I was training the two military doctors. And I think, Greg, you were with me here, right? I was, Arthur. Okay. I was the one taking the pictures. And there, there I am at the end. There you are. So uh, here, here's the, these are all the military doctors. And, and I believe... Uh, the war was going on at this time, and they they treated they treated us to lunch. Um, it was uh, it was a wonderful treat, to be honest with you. It just, it just felt like home. Um, this is on this is a day before the war ended. We delivered goods to uh, Vardeni's hospital, um, and as you can see, that's the van we took with a bunch of supplies and handed it over. And uh, the head doctor was crying. He was so excited. So this is a, an image of a one vac. So just to kind of give you a perspective on what it looks like. And then uh, this is a, an image from Zaytun Hospital, which I believe is the eighth hospital, eighth district hospital in Yerevan. And we delivered some neuro equipment. Uh, we also deliver an x-ray and then Dr. Avedis, which is right here, if you could see my cursor, um, he posted this on Facebook. Here's the infamous x-ray unit. And this is also in Zaytun Medical Center. Sorry about the, uh, the images upside down the chest. So uh, anyway, this is what we, this is, this is the exact extra unit we assembled and delivered. I believe there was five of them. And you can see the real time image. And here I am training. This is the CR. Back in the day, you would put film in here. And now you have a digital x-ray and then it sends it sends the image right to your laptop. And that's it. And I wanna introduce you to Dr. Arin Abulian and he's a pulmonologist and affiliated with multiple hospitals in the area. Thank you, Arthur. You're welcome. Dr. Abulian, welcome. Yes, hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Arin Abulian. I was uh, initially, well, I'm originally from uh, Tehran, Iran. I moved here as, at the age of 12, and uh, I have strong roots in Tov, Huber, and I graduated from CV in, uh, class of 1995. Um, subsequently to uh, undergrad and then medical school, and here I am working as a pulmonologist critical care physician in the community. Uh, I do have my offices in Glendale, actually. Um, as far as my involvement in Armenia, in all honesty, it's been a, a long, uh, long period of involvement, initially starting with uh, like Boy Scout camps in the late 90s, uh, followed by uh, a couple of uh, six week stints uh, during medical school when I actually went to Armenia mostly to learn. Um, uh, the idea of always wanting to help is obviously very um, noble, uh, but we also have to keep in mind that uh, as, as individuals in the community, uh, we're, you know, there's a lot that you can learn from uh, uh, being in Armenia as well. So it's not necessarily just to always give you all. You can certainly get a lot out of it as well, both uh, professionally as well as uh, personal fulfillment in being um, in a country, country uh, where uh, there are, there, you, you may have significant roots. Um, so uh, I, I don't know how many times I've been to Armenia, but obviously my involvement with the mission started in 2015. I was involved with the first mission and I have been on uh, five missions uh, with Adventist Health uh, in addition to a couple of other uh, personal uh, uh, personal visits uh, with the work in different hospitals. Um, our first trip was to Narimberian uh, in uh, 2015, uh, where uh, 
you know, when when you, when we show up, uh, it's you're, you're there. Uh, everybody greets you, and everybody's very very excited. Uh, uh, and that you'll get patients from very very serious medical conditions. Uh, we actually had a couple of people who just showed, showed happened to show up with an acute uh, heart attack, uh, and were immediately transferred to Yerevan uh, uh, with the expertise of the cardiologist we had with us to a patient who presented with heart failure uh, and required mechanical ventilation uh, where the expertise were not there at the time. And uh, because of her presence, we were able to essentially save her life and had her uh, go home in about four days uh, where the locals were telling us that, that, that if we had not been there, that uh, may not have ended uh, so well. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of the initial group that went to Stefan Arcad with Arthur in 2018. Um, and uh, again, very, very fulfilling. Uh, for me, this was a somewhat of a different mission because we were at a, essentially a, a larger medical center uh, and it wasn't as much rural. We were actually, were, I was were functioning in the ICU. And, uh, uh, you know, most of the teaching and involvement or uh, work was more collaboration with the uh, intensive care physicians in the bronchoscopy, intubations, extubations, as well as uh, kind of managing uh, post-op uh, recovery for some of these patients. Uh, I want to briefly touch on a couple of things. Uh, again, the, each individual uh, will find uh, their own niche uh, to help. Um, it's very important to uh, go in with an open mind. Um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of uh, individuals, those organizations uh, approach uh, uh, any sort of this sort of charity work as, uh, oh, I'm going to go tell them how it's done and come back. Uh, that has been proven to be ineffective over and over and over again. Uh, we always have to keep in mind the uh, of the facts on the ground and what resources are available. Uh, just because you can do something here doesn't mean you can do something do, do it over there. And just because you can't do something here doesn't mean you can't not do it over there. So uh, I would strongly, I think the biggest thing is I would always approach any, any project with an open mind, uh, go in there with honest assessment of what you can do, what you can offer, how sustainable it is. Uh, the, the, I guess the trick to making these missions work is, uh, is very, very close collaboration with your local partners. Uh, very difficult to do this all on your own. Uh, there has to be a mission and a guiding line or like a better term, a North Star that directs uh, the group, but uh, the, the local expertise and local collaboration is absolutely key uh, to making any sort of a project like this work. Uh, from a personal fulfillment side, again, each person has their own um, goals and values as far as why they're doing it. For me, it's been an absolute pleasure. I get so much satisfaction every time I'm there, and I feel like I make much, big, much, much more of a difference when I do something there than uh, I do here, frankly. But again, that's a, it's, I think it's a very personal um, value issue that uh, it has to get fulfilled. Um, I would encourage everybody to do something. Uh, we're fortunate enough now that there, there's multiple programs that have involvement uh, for different age groups, uh, including high school students, college students, and then uh, from there to the, the, the uh, Office of uh, the Commission for Diaspora Affairs with IGOR's program. Um, there's always room. Uh, if somebody wants to be there, I'm sure they'll find something for you to do. So keep at it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to yeah. introduce Dr. Armin Gregorian, uh, my good friend and hero uh, for the work he did uh, when we were in Rome, Miriam. I'm sorry, when we were at uh, Stefanica. Thank you so much, Dr. Arbulian. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Armin Gregorian. It's been uh, great to hear my friends uh, discussing. It just brings great uh, feelings to me because, as Arian says, for me, uh, it's part of me now. It's 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 more than just a visit. You know, it's a yearning that I have to go back every year to connect with my culture. But let me start a little bit about myself. I guess I thought about what I would say. Um, as far as me, my history, I, I was born in Tehran, Iran. At the age, uh, in the fourth grade, we immigrated to Germany from Germany to via Germany to America. I got here towards the end of sixth grade, went to Columbus, Toll, graduated from Hoover High School. Um, then I took the long route to get to medical school. I, um, I first went through community college that was followed by a transfer to UCLA. Um, from UCLA, I got a master's in applied physiology and then get, got into Chicago Medical School. So I was in Chicago that was followed by coming back here for a surgery residency, going back to the East Coast for subspecialty training, and then coming back to um, Glendale. 
my uh, uh you know obviously um as armenians we're very big in our culture our history you know we have a long history long civilization some of the things we do today was done 2000 years ago and it's done with a heart with the connection and you know all of us as armenians we have that in us we 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 are very cultured we love our our families it all comes from a history of love family family belief faith and that's all part of us so why am i talking about this uh, because you know as uh, william sarian said you find two armenians anywhere in the world they'll create a new armenia and there's so much truth to it because we all feel that so uh, my first uh, um, my first move to armenia was in 2000 and um, 2006 i went there as a excuse me 2004 through the bu program there was a month long um, a rotation that you could go to armenia and and go work and get credit for it so i figured that was a good time i always wanted to go to armenia and uh when i went to armenia um spent a month there uh through the medical system i was more of an observer as i was a medical student i wasn't really involved by um to to do procedures so on and so forth because i had just gone through medical school uh but that was my first awa- awakening and what do i mean by that for me going to armenia it really strengthened my identity you know and it brought up these questions of why do i care so much about being armenian why is it that i come we you know we've been going through multiple countries and we continue to feel very armenian and i think one of the biggest part is we were never um you know we were never given the choice to leave you know when you look at the big picture we were we left you know for as we all know for the main reason the armenian genocide and that's kind of the hurt that i feel everybody felt but what brought to me when i went to first time to armenia and i landed there i start to see people that talk like me act like me love like me feel like me it really strengthened my identity it really made me say wow there is a country that i've never been part of as i was born in iran my ancestors were born in iran some of them from the genocide that had immigrated over and and that really strengthened my character telling me what i am why i believe in it it clarified a lot of things for me as far as why i feel who i am and what is why it's so important to be a good kind human to give and to be do all of that because that's been our history you know and uh, that was my first first experience which really uh, connected me to my identity and after that i came back i had to finish residency so on and so forth and in 2018 when i had been out for about 8 years in my practice i was asked by a close friend uh through the uh who also was going to do the same um uh, mission with chevy chase um group and uh, with the collaboration of uh, with adventist and together they asked if i would go over there and help some of the younger physicians to do laparoscopic surgery because you know although laparoscopic surgery has been in america we've been doing minimally invasive surgery over the past 20 years it's still very limited in armenia especially artsakh there wasn't because of the equipment shortage because it's all about equipment and expensive equipment so they had just started the program and they had asked me if i would go and help start the process and that's when you know um uh, since then every year i make it an effort to go to armenia uh to for medical missions you know my my way to get in was medicine it could be anything you know it could anybody can have any way of uh, connecting there and helping as dr abulian said the, the importance of help is to go and connect and feel them see what they need see what you how you can help them because most of them tell me the biggest help they initially get is just the communication the connection the feeling that somebody cares for us okay it's not just we know what it is let me come tell you what to do you know that doesn't it doesn't work that way but as i was saying the second time i went there i met an amazing gentleman his name was varkes he was the first colorectal surgeon trained in armenia that came back from artsakh from the quote on quote freedom the 30 years that they had been free he was the first guy coming back to artsakh to start colorectal surgery and i made a partnership but besides that i made a friendship that lasts to this day that we talk once a week on facetime okay and uh and uh, he uh because of my ability to connect to become part of the armenian community he took me and took my awakening to the next level that for me to be who i am when i come to armenia and i come meet connect it only strengthens my soul it only strengthens what i believe in and it 
makes me change my life when I come back here. For example, as we know, we work hard here. That's the beauty of our country. You can achieve, you can have goals and no one's gonna stop you. But at the same time, I was realizing I was a bit abusing myself with that concept. As when I'd go to Armenia, it's so essential to socialize. It's so essential to have people talk. But over here, we're all on our cell phones. Everybody's texting. Those little things made a big difference in my life because now I make an effort every day to spend time, whether I'm hiking, whether I'm going and spending time to just spend time to be me, to be social, to be able to um, continue to live and, and, and grow. So that's something that I took you know, to my heart when I've come back from Armenia. So all in all said, I can tell you that, you know, my, my experience is one of many, and there's many people that have gone through similar experiences, but I, I challenge you to give it a chance. I challenge you when you have the opportunity to go back to this amazing little land that you might've been born there, you might've never been there, but go back to see the civility, the humility in these people that don't have much, okay, but they're kind, they, they, they believe in the same basics that we have in our whole life. That's why we're Armenians. And uh, you, it'll surprise you. It may change your life forever because it did for me. Thank you. Thank and you next, so much. Uh, uh, I think, I, I don't know who to introduce. So Talin, please. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Gregorian. I was just trying to unmute here. And next uh, we have Greg Aramanukian. Hi everyone, how are you? Sorry about the background noise. Uh, I'm, I'm at a truck stop in Arizona, but I thought this was very important for me to kind of stop and talk a little bit about what's happening here. Just by way of background, uh, I'm, I'm a CPA, I have an MBA, mainly a finance guy, worked for Mercedes-Benz as a controller, worked for McDonald's as a uh, basically uh, an accounting supervisor for the whole country. Uh, worked as a CFO for Wolfgang Fox. So my training has been mainly in finance and not medical. So one would say, what am I doing here? Well, I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm doing here. I think the theme is uh, essentially about making a difference. I guess the first thing about making a difference is it starts at every single age, uh, from a very young age as a Boy Scout or, uh, or a guide, making a difference in your community. And that's a lot of training to get you to where you wanna go after in life. Um, and then once you're equipped to handle sort of um, the bigger things in life, then you can make a bigger impact on making a difference. Now, in terms of making a difference, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that I've done here to, by way of example. For example, uh, during the Armenian Genocide, the 100th anniversary, we organized a race across the country. We went from uh, L.A. to Washington, carrying a proclamation, and we cycled the entire way through. And there were people that came in from all over the country. They flew in, they cycled, and they left. And they made a difference in that own regard. And the whole point was creating an awareness about the Armenian Genocide but more importantly, stopping other ones from happening. And unfortunately to this day, it's still going on. So that's kind of one thing that we did. The other thing was uh, during the war, I, that's where I met Arthur during the Armenian war. And I got a call in the middle of COVID and nobody was vaccinated. Everybody was scared or staying at home. And my friend said, listen, there's equipment to be delivered to Armenia, but the normal means of delivering can't get there. So can you be a mule? What does that mean? Can you actually, put stuff in your suitcase and, and help us get it there. So my role was, well, the first thing I did about that was I sat down with my family. I said, listen, uh, there's a risk. Obviously I can get COVID, bring it back. And then you guys can get COVID. So they all sat down and said, you know what, in this overall scheme of things, you know, our sort of a hardship that we can get out of it versus what we reward that we can give or help people is well worth it. And they all signed off. So my role was mainly, obviously, I'm not a doctor, but coordinating the transportation, coordinating all the different logistics. And there was a lot of hurdles all the way to being, I wish at one point we had a, you know, a Red Cross sign in one of our trucks because we were being chased by a, a drone in the middle of, uh, I think it was Sevan Alic. So there's a lot of things that happen. So my point there is, if you want to make a difference, there's different skill sets that come together and you can contribute in many, many ways to making a difference. And a lot of people have talked about uh, what Armenia has done to them personally. And I, and I, and I can relate to that a little bit. The, the day you land in Armenia, the way the day, the day I landed was to the Shamian. Uh, it was a school trip with the kids. And you land there and you say, I'm connected. Now, I, I understand how the whole package brought us together to this point. And one very important thing is 
people living in Armenia need to connect with the diaspora because they don't understand each other. So the more time you spend talking to them and, under, and they get a feeling of who you are and they get a sense of, you know, that they can trust you with different things, builds a long lasting friendship with everybody. And that's how you start making other things happen. So um, making a difference is, the last thing I'm going to say is making a difference makes, uh, there's a lot of issues involved because as you take the first step, everybody around you is going to tell you, can't be done, don't do it, blah, blah, blah. Because it's hard to do what you're going to do, but people always go to the negative before going to the positive. There's always a risk when you make, try to do something for someone. You're going to stick your neck out. You're going to get criticism. And if you fail, God forbid you fail, they're all going to talk about it. But if you succeed, they're all going to be around you and pat you on the back, okay? But don't, don't let that stop you because the impact of making a difference is well worth it in my mind, okay? Um, and that's about it. I mean, uh, I guess one more thing I could tell you is in, in line of making a difference, it's not a medical thing, but we created a cycling club in Armenia. It's called Nairi Racing Club. And it's basically, it's, it's in the town of Apovian. And who, every single person, every little youth, I guess, men, uh, boys and girls, they want to participate. They come, we train them for free. And the idea is basically they compete in nationals. And if they, if they qualify, they represent Armenia. We already had small success last year with one, one person representing it. So these are all little things that make a gigantic difference. Take the steps. I encourage you to get prepared and start very young with all kinds of little things that will get you to the bigger things. And that's my message, I guess. Thank you so much. Very inspiring. I think students definitely need to hear that, you know, you have to take chances. You have to take risks sometimes and as you, you know, your team did to, to really make a difference. So thank you so much for sharing. Let me go ahead and see if our, um, I know we have a small number of uh, live audience, but we'll be sharing this on our website for GUSD for speaker series so that more students can have a chance to, um, to view your message and is very inspiring. So give me one second. Okay, any questions from our audience? I, I know you are all very busy and uh, I don't wanna, you know, I know you don't have to go back to, to your work. So thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, one, one thing I wanted to know is if there are um, programs, I know you mentioned, um, you mentioned some of the programs. If you can um, send me an email about these specific programs that uh, with the missions or st things students can get involved and I will definitely share that with, with the teachers. Let's see, there was something on the chat. Um, okay, so one question is, Can you talk a little about why it's equally important to non-Armenian people to care about Artsakh? I could give you that answer. Go because, ahead. because if one thing is done wrong in the world and you don't learn from that lesson, it will be repeated everywhere else. So the theme that you have to adopt is basically, if you see a wrong, try to correct it. So, other, so it doesn't continue going on. The example of a genocide is the perfect one. It wasn't the first and it won't be the last, okay, as we could see. But the point is to learn from that tragedy and change it so others don't suffer from it. That will be my, my short answer on that one. Excellent. Thank you. And we have Hoover High School in our audience. Thank you, Hoover, for joining us. I'm going to show you. Okay, everybody says thank you. Hello. All right. Go Hoover. Yay. <laughs> that was my class. Thank Excellent. you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And once again, we have our own, you know, some of our own GUSD alumni that have made a difference and have, have given back to the community. So uh, if there are no more questions, uh, just wanted to, on behalf of uh, Glendale Unified, wanted to thank you um, 
to Arthur Zanian, Dr. Abulian, Dr. Gregorian, and to Greg um, Arawanupian for joining us today and taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, talk to us and to our um, to our students. So thank you and thank you. Um, thank have you. a wonderful day. Thank you again. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.